Hello and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll recap the final week in a regular season play for the Ferris State men's basketball, women's basketball, and hockey squads as all three get set for the postseason. We'll start first, though, with men's basketball, joined by head coach Andy Brockham. Coach, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This past weekend, obviously, uh, kind of nice to be back at home after playing four straight on the road uh, to round out the regular season. Yeah, it definitely showed. I mean, we played well um, coming back home, and uh, we spent a lot of energy on those road trips, being away from home, and you know, just trying to do our studies and, and prepare on the road and in the hotels. And it was fun to be with the team and be with the guys um, on those trips, but it takes a lot out of you, and it was good to, good to come back. As we go to some of the highlights, we'll get started on Thursday night, and obviously a, an impressive performance as you put up 117 points against Purdue Northwest and really got off to a fast start. Real fast start. I mean, it was just one of those nights where everything was going in, and the basket looked real big, and, um, you know, like I said, we, we just caught a little rhythm and a little flow, and all, all of our shots were going in. You know, Noah was, was on fire early and late, and, you know, the, the starters didn't miss a shot. Um, in the whole first half, which is crazy. I mean, I don't, I don't expect that to ever happen again. I hope it does, but just something that you don't see. And uh, you know, I think it was a perfect storm of just us being more relaxed to come back home. And they played us so tough at their place. You know, we had, you know, a healthy respect for them, and we were ready to go. Able to uh, come close to setting uh, several school records here in this game. 117 points, had 64 in the first half. And Obviously, some incredible shooting figures uh, starting lineup uh, shot over 90% for the ball game. Yeah, nights like this, you're just probably not going to be beat uh, when everything's rolling. And uh, we've had a couple of these in the last few years, and you like to have more, but probably a lot of teams go down um, on, on a night like this. So different teams have them, and this is one of our days where everything was going in. One of those games where uh, not only did you have an opportunity to get off to a, a big lead, uh, you brought the guys in off the bench and they uh, continue to play well and uh, you know that's our expectation you know we expect them to play well we expect them to um, be ready when their number is called and we expect them to carry the traditions on in the future um, if, if you know the, it's the near future by getting into this game or you know a little later on next year or the year after you know those guys got to carry the torch and they practice hard and they have skills so when they get in there our expectations are high for them and they did just what you said. They, they went in and stayed in our system and made a few good plays. Seven players reaching double-figure scoring here in the game, and uh, certainly after this game, able to cut down the nets, celebrating uh, another GLIAC championship, and I know that was special. It was special, and uh, we don't want to take it for granted at all. We just want to cherish it, and it's fun to share it with these guys and share it with the community and uh, cut that net up and give it to people that uh, want a piece of it. 117 uh, points uh, in that contest, but uh, didn't have a whole lot of time to really uh, reflect on that one and, and cutting down the nets. You had Grand Valley State coming to town on Saturday and a tough game against the Lakers. Yeah, we're just going to have to do a great job of reflecting after the season because there's so many things happening so fast that, you know, we're just going to have to look at all your releases. We're going to have to look back at the, at the Twitter page and just remember, oh, that, that happened, that happened, and enjoy it. But quick turnaround. A rivalry game, you know, you're putting that one behind you quick and, you know, you're literally back in the office printing out the box score of the next team and diving into the film that night. So you turn the page fast and that's what we're trained to do. So it's, it's not that hard, but, um, you know, you, you go on and you start thinking about that next opponent quick. Obviously a tremendous crowd on hand, more than 2,000 people uh, here for this rivalry game and a little bit different uh, type of pace uh, here in the early going in the first half. They did a great job executing their game plan. You know, both teams had shots rim in and out. That's uh, two blocks in these highlights by Kush. It's nice to have the point guard to come over and be able to do that. Pretty amazing. But um, they controlled the tempo. Um, we had some shots rim out, but so did they. And we couldn't get the press going, but, you know, the game stayed close. And in the second half, we were able to get up and down a little bit and, you know, make some plays like that. Two point difference uh, here in the first half as you took the lead into the locker room at halftime. But as you mentioned, a tight first half, you were able to make some key plays uh, early in the second half. You know, these guys just kept kept grinding at it and, uh, you know, played pretty good defense. Um, held them below their season percentages and they held us well below ours, too. So it was a defensive battle, a little slower game. But we got our pace going in a couple stretches in the second half and that, that helped. The crowd helped. And, uh, you know, Grand Valley's just got good players. and had a good game plan and you know overall we were just able to get them out of it just enough to take it home for a victory. 
Here, Kirshen Berry on senior day uh, led the way with 17 points, but uh, got some key contributions off the bench. Cole Walker in double figures uh, both games this past weekend. Yep, Cole, he's he can play offense, and he just keeps getting better and better. And uh, our expectations are extremely high for Cole, and uh, I mean just probably too high at, at some times, you know. But we're just trying to push him along um, as quick as possible because he's going to be a big cog. Um, you know, minutes are probably going to double next year, so not sure if that was a foul or not. I think Hank should have been a little more disciplined, just let him go. But uh, yeah, this this is just a fun game to play in, man. You look forward to these. Our guys look forward to them. I know the other team looks forward to it. It's just an exciting atmosphere and a good rivalry. There's Cole again stepping up with, with Hank and foul trouble. Nice to have a two guard that can make a steal and make a play like that too with 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 Peter, so I'm just impressed, every day impressed with our guys, with our players, it's exciting. You mentioned uh, Peter Furlick, uh, senior Noah King, Drew Cushingberry, uh, you had Taekwon Greer, Greg Kruzniak, five seniors, uh, just talk about what they meant being honored on senior day. Well, it was emotional, I mean, they, they mean a lot, and you just you just love them a lot, and that's all there is to it. it it's something that uh, just goes by quickly. You know, when you look at senior day, it feels like just yesterday they were coming in, and uh, those guys are special to the program, and. You know, they're part of the fraternity now, and it's still, you know, it's it's not an ending. It's just a beginning. You know, we got postseason play, and I'm excited for all the postseason play here with, with hockey and women's basketball. I mean, it's, it's an exciting time of year, and we're looking for some, you know, some of our teams to make long runs. You opened the GLIAC tournament, the number one seed this week, hosting Saginaw Valley State. Uh, talk about the opponent on Wednesday night here in the quarterfinal round. Well, we've played two pretty good games against them, so... Um, you know, I look at where they're powerful, and I see talented players and some scary things that we're going to have to defend well. They're well coached. They fought their way into the tournament, and you know, I, I expect it to be a good game. Tournament basketball is one notch above the regular season, so we'll have to be ready for that. And I know Saginaw is going to give it everything they have. Well, Coach, congratulations again on a fantastic regular season, 29 and one, GLIAC champions, and looking forward to the start of postseason play. Me too. Thanks, Robert. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports update right after this. The need for experienced educators is greater than ever. Ferris State University's School of Education is here to fulfill that need. At Ferris, students have the opportunity to choose from over 20 focuses while gaining first-hand field experience. Ferris State University, preparing the next generation of teachers who will shape the young minds of the future. For more information, go to ferris.edu slash education. Wow. You can get a 14-inch pizza with one topping for only $5.99 at Mancino's? Action! Hi, I'm Tony Presimoli from Tony's Basement Pizzeria, and our pizza is not that terrible. We may not have a 14-inch for $5.99, or great daily specials like a grinder combo for $6.99 with chips and a drink, or a small calzone combo. I also can't compete with the 10% discount that Ferris students have. You know what? I quit. If you want quality food, call Mancino's. At Ferris State University, be a provider. Be an investigator. What do you want to be? Be a Bulldog! Visit ferris.edu today. Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. Time to check in with Bulldog Hockey. We're joined by assistant coach Mark Kaufman. And coach, uh, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Rob. Congratulations. Uh, the Bulldogs get a big sweep this past weekend over Lake Superior and now making uh, the 21st consecutive uh, postseason playoff appearance here in school history and uh, really uh, speaks to the tradition here of Ferris State Hockey. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, it was a little nip and tough going into that uh, final weekend. Uh, we were on the bubble uh, as a playoff team and uh, uh, we were trying to maybe lock down the eighth spot, but as it turned out, uh, we made a couple of jumps uh, in the standings, and uh, uh, it was a good weekend. It was a good, good sweep, good uh, weekend for our seniors to finish out and have their parents there to watch uh, the series as well. So uh, all in all, real good. Certainly uh, a series this past weekend that was kind of like playoff hockey, both teams fighting uh, to get into the postseason and certainly a lot on the line for both squads. It was. It was, uh, it was kind of a pressure-packed situation, especially uh, uh, especially Saturday night for Lake State because they still had some life and uh, 
you know, that was a real kind of a playoff type of mentality they brought to the rink and, 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 and tried to, you know, play in that game. And, you know, even Friday's game, uh, <coughs> you know, I guess personally, they did a really good job in, in terms of their position and how they were structured on the ice. And uh, they had a couple of mishandled pucks and, uh, you know, a couple of misfires with some shots. And uh, otherwise, you know, they, they had a lot of shots, a lot of chances, and that yeah, game could have gone either way. We were fortunate that we prevailed on Friday to, you know, kind of ease, ease, in, ease into Saturday into senior night. As we go to the highlights, uh, first from Friday's game, got off to a quick start. Corey Mackin with an early goal, 45 seconds into the contest. Yeah, uh, he, when you start the game on time and score first, that usually bodes well for us during the course of the year. And, uh, you know, he had a phenomenal game uh, on Friday night at, uh, I believe, two goals. And uh, he was the first start of the game. But his all-around game on Friday was just, uh, just fabulous. Darren Smith had a nice weekend in net for you, posting back-to-back -back wins. Absolutely, he was he was a rock and kind of his, found his uh, old form, so to speak, and you know had a lot of uh, point-blank chances on um, uh, on Friday's game and w was there to save the bell. Obviously, uh, here in this opening period, uh, you held on to the, the one goal lead and had some opportunities maybe to increase that going into the second period. We did, we did. Uh, again, it wasn't our best period uh, structurally, but uh, you know on the scoreboard it was what counted, and uh, we were very fortunate to have that one nothing lead. Here uh, in the second period, uh, Bulldogs will be able to extend the lead as uh, Corey Mackin gets his second goal, and then we'll see a third one coming up uh, here shortly. Yeah, again, he's right where he should be, right around in that area. When when you're there, good things happen. And uh, uh, here, here's the other goal with uh, Zach Zaner having a tip in from uh, Cam Clark shooting from a kind of a bad angle. And that was kind of one that I, I think maybe put uh, the Lakers on their heels just a bit. Nice to see a senior, Zach Zaner, get his first goal of the year. Yeah, anytime you can. Uh, uh, from your depth players get that type of production that uh, really bodes well. Going into the third period here with a 3-0 to zero lead, uh, what, what are the keys here going into a period like that with a big lead? Well, you know, they're, they're going to be desperate. They're going to be uh, putting their best uh, playoff face on uh, as best as possible. And it, you know, the mantra was really, hey, let's score the next goal. You know, let's not sit back on this thing. Let, let's get after it and keep pushing forward. We will see Lake Superior uh, here shortly get a power play goal, uh, which uh, was their only goal of the night. Yeah, and I believe that might have been a six on four. They pulled their goalie for uh, the extra attacker, and uh, you know they converted. You know they had a lot. They've got a lot of pride and what have. You, and uh, uh, I mean they fought back as best they could. So here uh, in the third period, uh, we'll see. Finally, the Bulldogs get uh, the one that uh, kind of pushes it over the top. Here, Cole Norris gets uh, his first goal of the weekend. Yeah, it is an empty netter, and I believe the, this past weekend we hit three empty netters. So uh, you know that, that's kind of unusual in its own right. And you get that win uh, on Friday night and obviously clinch that playoff spot. Does that uh, ease some of the pressure going into the, the second night? Well, it does. But on the other hand, um, it was senior night. We had a, also a special face-off uh, uh, presentation by uh, Woodbridge, Woodbridge Ferris's great, 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 great grandson. And um, when you have those types, I don't want to, they're not distractions, but they're just uh, little extra layers that you know are part of the game it, it kind of you know it, it can kind of take the steam out of your sail so to speak and you got to kind of refocus quickly and uh, uh but the kids did a really really good job and um even though lake state got the first goal we, we hung in there we battled back our second period was probably our best period of play uh, all, all weekend and uh, uh but it was a good way to send everyone off on a uh, on a positive note as we go to the highlights uh, we'll see the ceremonial puck drop yes. right here to start the game with Corey mackin involved in that and then Obviously, uh, here taking on a Lake Superior State team that still had a lot to play for going well, on Saturday. Well, absolutely, and uh, they scored first, got on the board, and uh, uh, that's what you want to do when you're playing on the road and you know fighting for your life. That 1-0 uh, score kind of stood up uh, here until the middle part of the second period, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you had some opportunities here, maybe uh, to find the scoring column. Yep, uh, just finishing off the first period, uh, Smitty really, really played well, but here in the second period, we were pretty good in terms of uh, uh, our overall play, but uh, uh, you know, here in the first period, we're still uh, viewing. We gave up some opportunities when we were on the power play, so to speak, and that was uh, uh, a little, little frustrating to begin with. But uh, the guys regrouped between periods and got ready for that second period. Darren Smith with 30 saves uh, here in the second game and uh, had over 30 saves in both games of the weekend series. Yeah, uh, again, he was uh, he was our uh, player of the week, so to speak, in terms of just uh, being the best bulldog on the ice. Cole Norris uh, here in the second period uh, will get the first goal of the game for the Bulldogs, second goal of the uh, mm -hmm. weekend for him, and a freshman that continues to play well. He does. I believe he hit the double figures with uh, goals this year, which is a really good sign for him. And uh, again, we've had some really good production from our first year players this year, and uh, it just continues to go weekend, weekend, and we're very fortunate because of that. Obviously, an even game coming in here into the third, and uh, 
You see the Bulldogs uh, here shortly get the, the biggest goal maybe of the of the night. Yeah, it, it was. It was just a you know good play, good great shot by uh, uh, Mitch Maloney, and just uh, uh, a good way to uh, you know finish it off. And so to speak, and there's Cole again in terms of you know finishing off and uh, uh, getting you know actually the game time goal as it all shakes out. It was the go ahead goal right there. It was uh, giving you a two to one lead, and then we'll see uh, here as the as the game goes on, Lake Superior State uh, certainly pulling out all the stops and pulling the goal. Yeah, they, they pulled the goal a couple of times, and uh, uh, that was supposedly the game winning goal. But uh, we we had another empty net goal, and uh, and make it four one. They score again make a 4-2, so one of those empty net goals became the game-winning goal, and you don't see that too often on a score sheet. Mitch Maloney uh, with two goals, uh, both of them on the empty net uh, here in the contest as you yeah. get the sweep, and obviously on senior night, uh, pretty cool uh, to have uh, the seniors honored and, and go out with a victory. Yeah, it was. It was a great send-off, and speaking of Mitch, he, he suffered a, a pretty tough injury the last couple of weeks and was able to you know battle back, and those even though they were empty net goals, they, they, they meant a lot. His overall game was... Uh, uh, really inspirational. He's one of our top players on, on, on the club, and uh, uh, getting him back for that series and moving forward into Bowling Green is, is a real plus for us. Seven seniors honored, and certainly they've met a great deal to the Bulldog hockey program. They have. You know, in their early, their early years as freshmen, sophomore, they were uh, involved in uh, uh, tournament championships, uh, an NCAA appearance as well, and uh, you know, uh, just a really, really solid group on the ice, but just as important, uh, they, they really made their mark in a real positive way in the classroom. This week on the road, first round of the WCHA playoffs at Bowling Green, a familiar opponent. What does it take to get some uh, wins uh, here this weekend? Yeah, it's the best out of three. Uh, it's in their home barn. It's a pretty uh, pretty tough place to play. They swept us last year down there. They swept us at home this year. Uh, you know, they split over the weekend. Uh, they're feeling good about themselves, their program, and what have you. The good news is that you know we, we feel a bit confident. You know, after suffering a couple of defeats the week before, we came back with two wins. Um, everyone. That's, that can be healthy, is healthy, which is a good sign. Our goaltending seems to be in place. So we just get get down there and get that first game and see how it goes from that point on. Well, Coach, congratulations again on the sweep, making the playoffs, and best of luck as you travel to Bowling Green. Thank you again, Rob. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this. At Ferris State University, be a designer. Be an informer. Be a maker. Be a bulldog. Visit ferris.edu today. Cuts back to the right side, breaks a tackle, touchdown! Mack and shoots and scores! Corey Mack and off the rebound! On the Williams. Back to Cushingberry, three-pointer up and goes. The act tournament champion. Ferris State with a huge win. Come rise with us. For more information, visit FerrisStateBulldogs.com. At Ferris State University, we're more than our student-to-faculty ratio. More than our variety of programs, our internship rate, or our number of student organizations. Here, you're never just a number. You can be yourself and be focused on your goals. Be inspired every day and be ready for tomorrow. Be a Bulldog. Go to ferris.edu. Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. Time to check in with women's basketball. Joined by head coach Kendra Fossett. Coach, first of all, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me again. Congratulations on uh, making a GLIAC tournament appearance uh, here this coming week as uh, you got a big win over Purdue Northwest last week and obviously a, a tough game against Grand Valley State uh, that went uh, down to the fourth quarter. Yeah, thanks. I mean, it's um, it's a great step for our program. I'm, I couldn't be more proud for of, of our kids and and, uh, and our players and what they've done. and. Um, you know, we, we took a quick moment on Friday to sort of look back, especially with, with that senior group to, um, you know, just where we started and where we are now. And um, while we're not done taking those taking steps, certainly we have a lot of work to do. 
Um, this is a pretty big one. As we get to some of the highlights, we'll start with uh, Thursday's game against Purdue Northwest. And you knew coming in, if uh, you won that game, you were going to be in the conference tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, did that put some extra pressure on the kids coming into that game? Yeah, our players have no idea. Um, uh, they they knew. Um, we didn't talk about it much. We you know we always are just talking about hey let's just get better. I may or may not have been having an anxiety <laughs> attack. Um, but you know, like our players love to play. They love to play with each other. The perspective that they keep. I mean, they're just so grounded. Like we're getting ready to go to the conference tournament, and they're worried about class on Wednesday morning. I'm like, oh, ladies, man, you are awesome. We are something else. So you know, we, we were just excited to play and be home, um, and and have an opportunity to to make the conference tournament. And we were going to enjoy every minute that we could. Obviously, Shania Huggins right there with the basket, a freshman that's been playing well for you. Yeah, you know, we made a little change in the starting lineup, and um, and and Shy has just ran with it. She's just done a really good job. Our pace is a little bit different. It helps our rotations. It helps us um, be able to press a little bit more, um, and and it's really, you know, it's been really good for us um, as a group, and and probably most importantly. You know, one of our captains, point guard, junior captain Lexi Bush and, and Riley Blair, one of our sophomores, came out of the starting lineup and, you know, just didn't bat an eye. Because um, no one on this team cares who gets the credit and we just we just want to make each other better and make our, our team better and it is about our program. And um, so, you know, it says a lot about Shy and Adrian, but it also says a lot about, about those two young ladies as well. After a close first quarter, you really uh, took control of the game in the second quarter, and then here able to extend the lead in the third quarter of that play. Yeah, I, I thought I thought we just dialed up the defensive intensity, um, and we got a lot of steals, layups. We got a lot of offensive rebounds. I mean, you could see you know Lily was a monster on the boards. Um, you know, I thought Bray and Benner played really really well. She was composed. Um, you know, she just gets better every day, and um, you know, unfortunately. She, for her, she's playing in front of, you know, an all three-time all-conference player. Um, but every day she gets better, and, and the sky's the limit for that young lady. 83-47, the final score, and uh, obviously that gets you into the conference tournament. Takes maybe a little pressure off, but a big game on Saturday, uh, a rivalry game, senior day, and a lot going on in conjunction with Saturday's game. Yeah, a lot going on. Um, you know, we had a, a little bit of a celebration on Friday. Like, let's just take a moment, because I'm not a big celebrate kind of person like I'm just we're on to the next one right and and sometimes you know when we move from game to game or even weekend to weekend we're like that's that's there like next um, whether it was a big win or a tough lot what doesn't matter like on to the next one and um, and our, our our group appreciated um, that we actually talked about what that meant for our program and and gave props not only to those kids that are in our program right now but those who have come before us as well Obviously a hard-fought game uh, here and uh, really played a, a strong game against Grand Valley State on Saturday. Yeah, I thought we started the game really well. Um, it was one of those nights, uh, you know, a senior night, and I think every time Rach touched it, the ball somehow got in the basket. Um, that was a special night, I think. You know, Leah was composed. Her defense was phenomenal. Um, I thought we did a really, really good job on both ends of the floor, probably one of the better halves that we've played, um, certainly and um, was, was really proud of our composure. This is the first time we've, because it is a rivalry game, this is the first time for our group that we have played in a rivalry game with this amount of composure. And um, we, we, that's what we talked about going into that game. And you know, this, this game right here, I think just really illustrates that we are still getting better every game. We are still growing as a group and we are not ready to be done. And, um, you know, that's one of the things about senior day that was awesome is that it wasn't our last game. Obviously, I uh, hear uh, battling Grand Valley State in a one point game at halftime. It was two at the end of the third quarter. What was yeah. some of the keys maybe in the fourth quarter? Yeah, the fourth quarter, uh, the, the zone, we, we really struggled to score against the zone and their length gives us gives us trouble and we were able to bring their length away from the rim with Rachel shooting the ball the way she was um, and we couldn't do that versus the zone and so we really struggled I mean, we got a couple really good paint touches I mean we're still trying to get her the ball um, we got a couple really good paint touches um, we just we couldn't finish it I thought we had a you know at the beginning of the fourth quarter I thought we as we were making a run uh, I think they were up five and we had two really good defensive possessions in a row that I thought were 
awesome that ended up in fouls and put them at the line and um, you know a couple bounces the other way and and um, but overall I was I was really happy with the way we with, with the way we played and you know we're we're we're, we're ready for postseason. Obviously it was senior day Rachel McInerney uh, Hannah Evo along with Leah Humes and three seniors that met a great deal to your program. Yeah. I knew you were going to ask me about that, and I'm going to try not to talk. I've just been a, an emotional wreck all all weekend, um, and you know what these young women have not only like what they meant for our program, but what the way that they have grown. Um, you know, they have helped me grow as a coach. Um, you know, Hannah Evo is probably one of the most mature young women that I have ever been around. She is a great leader. She is really solid in who she is and allows that to, to guide her decisions with her teammates. With, I mean, she's in a tough spot. She's, not, she's a student assistant on her staff. She's still in the locker room. She's, and, and she just, she, she has the best interest of our program in mind all the time. And uh, I can't thank her enough for that. Um, and then Leah Humes, I mean, when Leah first came to us, um, she had no idea what it took to be successful at this level. Um, she was pretty inconsistent. Um, I don't know that she had ever applied herself in the classroom. And probably, this is what I'll get choked up the most about, is like her growth as a person, whew, unbelievable. Like the way she has, she is so much more comfortable who she is. She's not afraid to dive in and try. I mean, she's doing great in the classroom. Um, she's con been consistent for us. Um, and we didn't know if we were going to be able to count on her, and she, she's proved that we can. Um, and then Rachel, you know, her accolades on the floor, they speak for themselves. She's an unbelievable player. Um, she has made herself into an unbelievable player. She never played her freshman year. She came in her sophomore year, a coaching change, and um, the grit and determination and belief and vision that she has had um, has gotten us to where we are now and, and helped us take so many steps forward and build our culture and lay the foundation. And I mean, she, she just is a phenomenal young lady. Well, Coach, uh, best of luck, obviously, to the Bulldogs this uh, coming week uh, in the Gleak tournament against Michigan Tech. And I know it could be a hard matchup uh, against Michigan Tech on the road. Yeah, no question. Tough place to play. I mean, they're a really good program. They're a storied program, um, you know, raked in the country and um, all that good stuff. And, and you know, we're going to see how much better we get and how much better we've gotten and we're gonna go out and have a have have a good time and enjoy playing with each other and competing at a high level. Well coach best of luck. Thanks. That'll do it for Ferris Sports Update. Follow all the action at FerrisStateBulldogs.com. Have a great week.